what to call it. Okay, um, thanks for joining me, Em, and for a part one of our HR Leaders series. For those listening, my name is Dash and I work at Impraise, and um, Em's kindly decided to join me for this, so would you mind giving us a quick introduction about you, Em? Cool. So my name is Emma Kirkman and I'm based in Auckland, New Zealand. Um, I wear a couple of hats in the HR space. So um, I'm an independent contractor and I work in HR transformation. Um, so I work on projects um, to do with CX and EX. And I'm also co-founder of a company called People Labs, which is about helping um, HR teams move towards new ways of working. Awesome. Lots of experience then to call on, which is exciting. Um, so what we're finding in this current climate with the remote working teams is there's kind of three buckets that uh, leaders are having to juggle responsibilities. And we've sectioned those into uh, engagement, productivity and support. So I'd love to ask you three questions around those three fields. And if you wouldn't mind just uh, elaborating on what your thoughts are around those three questions. Sure. Cool. So the first one is on engagement. So of what we've seen is managers are struggling. So how do you, uh, or how have you seen managers uh, enable trust within their teams when you have uh, no visibility of your teams in person? Uh, and so enabling trust across like in a virtual environment? Yes, yeah. and, yeah. So, or in person, if you have examples of that too. Oh, okay. Um, well, psychological safety has had quite a big focus in leadership development, I've noticed globally in the last um, two years in particular. Um, and I guess a few key things there are around, um, well, certainly in the roles that I've been in the last couple of years are around um, transparency and clear expectation. So I have noticed that even say, for instance, in leadership development programs, there is a focus on making sure that clarity of role is clearly understood. And particularly in the last 18 months when I've been working in, um, tribe environments, I've seen that done very well because everything is about transparency, alignment and good comms. Um, and so I think trust is built because that expectation is understood. Um, psychological safety is built around awesome feedback. And so being able to um, say what's on your mind without fear of repercussion, that whole like um, hierarchy type thing doesn't really um, exist. So I think if you have less of that hierarchy approach to things, you tend to see more more trust because people can speak more openly and um, feel comfortable with that. And in terms of that being a virtual system, do you think the ability to communicate openly and have that transparency is still possible? Or do you think it's something that needs to shift a little bit because of the virtual? I think teams who, so teams who have had to move to a virtual environment because of the pandemic, if that trust is already there, I think it's easy to continue with that in a virtual environment. Mm -hmm. I do think if you're building a team or if you're a new team or if you're joining a new team, or if you're a, a new leader, I think that technology does potentially create a barrier mm -hmm. for that because um, you know, energy is exchanged in person, right? Mm -hmm. And it's actually quite an art, I think, to communicate that warmth and that empathy over, over the medium. So um, personally, like from my point of view as an HR practitioner, I see that as being um, a new area of skill set development that we need to prioritise is mm -hmm. how do you communicate effectively across a barrier. Yeah, that's an interesting one. A lot of people didn't see soft skills as a priority previously, but it is very much becoming at the forefront of the conversation now. That's awesome. So in terms of the productivity segment if you will um visibility is super difficult in this climate so how do your people leaders manage expectations within their teams of you know what they should be working on have they delivered the thing um and who is working on what do you have any I, with my my contractor hat on i think um tribe environments are amazing at this because everything is based around clear pieces of work in the backlog, you know, acceptance criteria, the way the work's broken down. Um, teams have their fingerprints all over what the priorities are for the squad. And so I don't think um, productivity is necessarily an issue there. And the trust is quite high, particularly amongst contractors, because we know if we don't deliver on stuff, we don't get freaking paid. So, yeah. you know, whether we're working remotely or in person, that trust is there that we're gonna deliver what right. we say we do. 
I will say for bigger, more traditional organisations, so perhaps like banks or financial services that are um, very grounded in hierarchical manager employee relationship you have to be in the office and visible and if you don't have good systems like collaboration tools like slack or um or trello if you don't have those sorts of tools set up you know it is quite hard to keep track of what needs to be done and who's committed to what and um so i i think for those companies that weren't set up with sas based stuff before the pandemic and now they're trying to be super collaborative and we'll find that challenging yeah. Um, yeah. You so I, I, sorry. I was just going to say, um, I went out to 15 um, customers, so HR people, myself over the last seven days. Um, and the number one theme coming through in terms of their areas of focus, both now and post lockdown. So New Zealand comes out of lockdown in two weeks time, but is how do we continue productivity and engagement from remote working? Because mm-hmm. it's such a challenge. It's, it's such a, um, a different way of working for most companies here. And so how do you develop um, leaders who know how to lead through that and manage workloads? And how do you um, inspire people to, to be like even more accountable than they used to be to deliver on what they say? Yeah. They would? Were there any uh, insights that came out of those conversations? Um, no, just that they need to do something about it. And so HR teams here are under tremendous pressure to have a silver bullet that solves that. But of course there is gonna be no, um, no silver bullet i mean we're talking about rewiring patterns of working that have existed for decades yeah yeah you touched on a really good one um on the communication and having the tool stack to be able to collaborate like trello and slack um for the for the companies who already have those in place it it works but can you see challenges in terms of supporting people in these ways that don't have the tools such as trello and slack so i mean from my personal point of view, um, without naming the bank, I mean, actually most banks are the same. They, um, they have such ridiculous security standards that you can't use things like Trello or Slack. So people are forced to do workarounds and break policy and rules in order to do that. And so, you know, those sorts of institutions need to lower that level of security so that people can actually use those collaboration tools, like give people the guardrails to say, we don't care what you use, say from this list of tech stacks, but you know, use your, your now not to download something that's going to give you a virus, but maybe you could use one of these five collaboration tools and, and mm-hmm. go with it. But they, they make it so hard for people to use cool, easy to use things like they're not consumer grade standard. Like people want to use tools that are as intuitive as Facebook or as intuitive to use as Instagram. But in these big institutions, they have these like legacy products that are just so not slow and clunky. Fun. And if they're like the, you know, if the VPN's not working, then everything's chugging and going slowly. And so from a productivity point of view, rubbish. And then from like the employee's point of view, it's like, oh, I'm pulling my hair out. I actually can't even do like basic stuff. Right. So you think by changing some policies to lower the barrier to allow people to freely communicate and do their jobs better will massively help in the ability to keep yeah. it united. And empower teams and squads to use the technology that works for them. Because I mean, what matters is that they deliver value and reach their outcomes, not what tools they use, no. in my opinion. Yeah. Awesome. That covers all the three questions I wanted to ask. But one last question is, what's your one key takeaway from this current shift of mindset and way of working that you would like to put out into the world to share to other HR leaders? Um, well, s- sneakily, um, I've been smirking in through this, this time in New Zealand because I personally have lost quite a few gigs and quite a few contracts because I didn't want to be in the office 24 seven. And so many recruiters and so many employers were like, nah, you have to be in the office in order to deliver value and do your job. But actually this has forced us to find new ways of working and guess what? People are doing it, Mm. you know? So like if we challenge ourselves to work differently, we can actually do it. So for me, that's been the biggest um, insight is that you can actually make it work. Awesome. That's yeah. I agree with you on that. It's been super cool to see innovations come out of this thing. Well, um, I'm going to hit stop, hit record, and thank you so much, Em, for your input. And uh, My pleasure. I look forward to the next session.